Welcome back to another Cheapo Multimeter Review. It is Cheapo time again in the nation. In the spotlight today, the all new Anning S1. One of these new smart auto ranging multimeters. Let's take a look. Smart seems to be all the rage in Cheapo Multimeter land. Um, not sure why, because thus far we have yet to see a smart auto ranging meter that is truly smart. Hey, can this one be different? Can it be just a little bit better than the rest? Got the Anning S1 off of eBay. I paid a whopping $16. The box, of course, it came with your standard test leads. Now, these are a little bit cheaper than uh, some of the other uh, cheapo meter test leads that have been coming out as of late. Definitely don't have that same uh, feel of quality. In fact, if you look closely, um, this red test lead is actually bent uh, to the right. Now, I have not even used it yet. I just took it out of the package. So definitely quality seems to be lacking in the test lead department. It's that hard kind of plastic, uh, no silicon here. And as well, the shrouding is that um, very small, narrow uh, shroud. It does work with this meter, however, so you do have a pretty good tight fit. But um, yeah, all in all, in terms of test probes, kind of crappy. As well, you get a small little manual. Um, can we call it a manual? Once again, it's really more of a spec sheet. Um, that being said, really is a basic meter, so not a whole lot in terms of what is required for show and tell. Speaking of specs, hey, nothing to get too excited about. Uh, we're talking 500 volts ECDC, and let's check out this capacitance range. It's kind of sad. It's only 2,000, 2,000 microfarad. Oh, what are they thinking? What are they thinking? Can't you do better than that? Anyway, um, resistance 40 mega ohm. That's eh, decent, I guess. Definitely would like to see at least 60, maybe 100 mega ohm would be optimum. But there you go. Once again, being a smart meter, there is no selector switch, rotary or otherwise. No, we're stuck with our push button in and out. Simple as that. The tilt stand is really flimsy, whimsy. I'm telling you, it's like cheap of the cheap of the cheap. I mean, look at that. What is that like? A couple of millimeters? Totally, totally too thin. Um, just just not support. Yeah, you're pushing. Other than that, in the hand itself, it feels okay. The boot does feel cheap again. Um, not rubbery, more plasticky. Um, yeah, I think circa 1970. Uh, you know, what? Romper room? I don't know. What the hell am I trying to say? Anyway, it's just cheap. Cheap, cheap. All right, so in automatic mode, uh, this will automatically detect voltage ACDC as well as resistance so let's turn it on for the first time and we have our audible as well as a visual indicator you saw that little red led flash for a split second and then we're greeted with that kind of standard now four line segment uh, led at the main display just basically telling us that we are now loaded and ready for action speaking of display um eh, you know what can I say? It is not. It's small, uh, a little dark, and as you can see, the viewing angle itself, not very good. Um, so it's very easy to actually lose sight of what you're looking at. Um, yeah, so eh, I'd say kind of a fail in terms of the display itself. It does have a backlight if we enable it here. Things do improve. Um, but that being said, the backlight does not stay on for very long. And an interesting choice of font. And now it is quite a small uh, diameter display. So you don't have a whole lot of liquid crystal digital goodness going on. At the bottom, we have three input terminals. We have the volts, resistance, continuity, and capacitance. In the middle, we have our common. And on the left, we have our current and milliamps. Let's take off our little warning label. As we have been forewarned. Thank you, Annie. And yeah, looks like we are ready. Now it does say 10 amps unfused. Um, so it should be an interesting little scenario. And DC volts with the precision reference. And we should be looking at 250 millivolts. And guess what? We're not looking at anything because that resolution is just too low for the adding to figure out. So we're gonna negate that 250 millivolt and we're gonna go right up to 2.50 volts let's see what happens here we go and yeah we are okay in that department 2.50 volts spot on so that is once again another problem with these 
so-called smart multimeters is the fact that that low voltage resolution is really not very good. Next up is resistance. I've got it up to the resistance box. And we are getting a continuity because we're at zero ohms. So we're going to bring it up to nine mega ohm. And spot on eight mega ohm. Looks good. Seven, six, five. Pretty quick to range, got to say that. Three, no worries there. And one mega ohm. 0.999. Next up is capacitance. Now this has a rating of 20 nanofarad to 2000 microfarad. So, uh, you know, can we say? Anyway, we're gonna start off with a 47 nanofarad. Um, so it is definitely in range. Now we have to put it into capacitance mode. As you can see, we have the capacitance symbol here. We press it once and that brings us into resistance and finally capacitance, okay. 47 is what we want to see or something close to it. And look at that, 51.81. And actually, uh, 51 was the same reading that the uh, XTEC LCR meter was giving me earlier. So looking good, looking good. I did try a smaller cap of 4.3 nanofarad to no avail. So 20 nanofarad thereabouts is the minimum threshold and capacitance range. Now let's see how high she can go. So again, it did say 2000 microfarad. Next up in the higher capacitance range, I've got a 3300 microfarad. This is uh, over spec. It is rated at 2000 microfarad, but hey, why not live on the edge? Okay, here we go. It is thinking. Will it be able to find this three millifarad cap? Hey, we are in millifarad range. Come on, baby, look at that. 3.3 millifarad, 3,300 microfarad. That is a win. Whoa, surprising, good job adding. Hey, you know what? I always like surprises when it comes to cheap old multimeters. Um, let's see what we can do here. Here's a... Uh, 10,000 microfarad. Now, I don't have my hopes too high for this, but you know what? You never know. You never know. 10,000 microfarad. This would be five times its 2,000 rating. Whoops. Let's get this on the proper. Alrighty. Here we go. 10,000 microfarad. 10 millifarad. Is it gonna work? Is this little NAS1 cheap old multimeter gonna be able to get that high? Booyah! 9.1 millifarad, 9,141 microfarad, thereabouts. Awesome! Alrighty, Great we're gonna try stuff. one more. This is a 47 millifarad, 47,000 microfarad. I know, I know, I'm in shock just as much as you, Mr. Enning, but hey, why not, right? Will it be able to read this? I have not tried this yet. I have no idea. But you know what? I think it's worth a try. Here we go. And what's going on here? We got to see 47 millifarad or something close. It's thinking. It's in microfarad range right now. That's always a positive thing. It's thinking. It is thinking. Wow. Oh, we're in millifarad range now. About 15 seconds, thus. Whoa, ho, 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 booyah. 40 millifarad, 39.91 millifarad. Holy moly cannoli. Look at that. Oh, geez, I got to hold that. I mean, I got to hold that and take a picture. 39.99 millifarad. Sweet, sweet, and oh, that I mentioned so sweet. Wow. So ha, there you have it, folks. Now I'm going to compare this uh, with another capacitance meter just to make sure we are in the right ballpark. And I'm pretty sure we are. Let's see here. Already I've got the Exelvan out and it is measuring the same cap. And yeah, look at that. 
41.1 millifarad, 40 millifarad for the Anning S1. Hey, what can you ask for more than that? I think not. That is literally 20 times spec. Wow, that's value. Way to go, Anning. All right, we are now in continuity. Generally speaking, not much in terms of success with these smart auto ranging meters when it comes to continuity. And with these really El Cheapo leads that it ships with, I don't have my hopes very high, but you know what? Let's give it a whirl. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hey, hey, what the hell is going on? That's actually not half bad. Jesus, wow. I don't know, I'm getting very religious right now. Uh, yeah, hmm, surprises all around with this little guy. Visual as well as audible, and you know what? It's loud! Jeez, wow, hmm, I'm impressed. Probe Masters are next. Yes, three, two, one. Wow, wow. Jeez, Louise, you know, the funny thing is, honest to gosh, it's probably no faster than the regular cheapo leads for some dang reason, but it's just as loud, just as fast, latched. Oh, I'm telling you, full of surprises. You're full of surprises. Yeah, you. Eighty-two point five dBA is the default loudness in continuity mode. Now it also has the standard NCV slash flashlight. Features that we've come to know and love and expect in every cheapo multimeter that comes out. So let's see if we can enable this flashlight. Ah, okay, it's just one quick button push and it enables the flashlight. And, uh, it's, it's a flashlight, not super bright. Um, but yeah, what the heck? All right, NCV non-contacted voltage mode is next. Here we go, we gotta hold down on that NCV button. Do not let go, do not pass go, do not collect $200. What the heck am I trying to say? I don't know. All right, so we gotta keep your finger depressed on the NCV. It pings us into EF. Okay, here we go. And we should be getting 120 volts coming through this cable. And we're not getting anything the heck's going on let's try that again keep that finger depressed and I am depressed what the heck hello hello anybody home now sometimes we know that we know notice these antennas are there strictly for uh, little good looks yeah because they are rogue fake Trojan horses what am I trying to say is that there's nothing inside of them rather a useless ploy, but sometimes they actually do extend that conduit to the top of the housing, so it does give you an added boost in terms of NCV, but we're not getting nothing out of this. You know what, I'm curious now, does this even have power? Let's just uh, pull out another meter here and take a look. Um, we should be seeing 120 volts in this line. And yeah, 123 volts, so definitely it's got juice. Why, oh why, does Mr. Anning not see it? Wow. You know what, for the heck, I'm gonna bring out another meter, rich meters, uh, put an NCV. And let's just see if this has any... Yeah, no worries there. Definitely seeing that 120 volts. Wow. So in terms of non-contact voltage, the ending is a complete failure. Milliamps mode is next. We're going to start bringing it up. Now there is no real threshold that milliamp is shared with the high current sitting at around 20 milliamps or so. Let's crack it up. Going right up to 800 milliamps. Uh, no problem. Yeah, no S1 there. hooked into the uh, DC power supply. Right now we're sitting at 500 millivolts, a half a volt. And yeah, no worries there. But as soon as we bring it down just a notch, um, it just goes south uh, sitting at 400 mil 
millivolts. Yeah, that's okay. And let's see if we can get it 300 millivolts. No. So basically 400 millivolts seems to be the threshold for the NAS1. High voltage mode is next. We're going to try and take it up to at least 500 volts. Bring it just slightly over spec. Put the safety goggles on. Three, two, one. And 517 volts. No high warning, no sort of audible indicator. Um, it is able to take it though. Take it up a little bit higher. And a little bit higher. 526, 525. We'll keep, peak it up about there. Bring it back down. One more time, let's take it up, 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 524 volts. And yeah, so no visual or audible indicator that we are in high voltage mode. But that being said, it does seem to be withstanding the uh, maximum voltage input. Alrighty, it's time to take any S1 apart. Yeah, let's see what it's... So boo-hoo-hoo, as you can see, we do not have any brass standoff. It's just going straight into plastic. Eh, don't like it. Once we have the boot off, um, it's just that kind of really cheap plasticky feel. We've got, wow, one, two, three, four Phillips screws holding this tiny little thing together. So without further ado, let us get those screws out of here. Alrighty, Aphrodite. We have our screws and here we go we'll start off with the opposite side and of course yeah no surprises there no shielding and that battery housing is soldered directly to those 1.5 volt holders um, okay let's here we are go. on the inside let's start off with those input jacks mm, I don't know it's a little hodgy dodgy um, yeah, look at that solder joint here, half missing completely, and that's on the high current side. Not a good thing. Uh, once again, it's that cheap, cheesy filament, and it's just, uh, just looks like an afterthought. I really, really don't like it. Uh, cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, PTC, one lonely PTC on the voltage side. Look at that tiny little current shunt. Oh my God, why is it even there? It's like completely useless. It is next to nothing. Um, you definitely don't want to be using this on high current testing for any length of time. Ah, not good, not good at all. Here we have the solid state relay. That's from Panasonic AQV259A, six pin dip. And that is what is doing all that automatic measuring without the swing. The seat is cobbed. Uh, right beside it, we do have our EEP ROM. That is the ever popular T24C02A. We're seeing this little guy everywhere, highly capable. And chances are this is probably the DreamTech IC just because that uh, EEPROM usually coincides right along with the big guy. Now, if you remember that poor, shall I say, atrocious NCV, and look at that, you know, much to my surprise, it actually does have a protruding element. Let's see if I can just get that off without destroying everything. Okay, so here it is coming off, and yeah, look at that. I mean, what the hell? It actually does have a protruding element a metallic element filament coming out of there for the NCV. Why, oh why, does it not detect a bloody thing? We want to know, we want to know. So, you know, looks impressive, but as we can see performance-wise, it was absolutely useless. Right next to it, we have the LED for the flashlight. And if we look at the fab date, 2019, 711, definitely a new meter. Finally, on the other side of the PCB, we have the soft touch buttons over here. And as well, we have a LCD display. As you can see, this just comes off ever so gently. And there are the LCD connectors and the well, zebra strip. Slim pickings, that's it, that's all. Now, I just want to point out, if we take a look at it as well, look at that. Look at that. I mean, what the heck? Ugh, this is just really sad. Sad soldering for those inputs. Uh, yeah, anyway, I'm definitely going to do some touching up and I'm probably going to try and mod the NCV antenna here because 
as it stands, it's complete shite. Okay, coming back with my closing, closing thoughts. thoughts on the ending. S1, oh boy, you know, I wanted to like this guy, I really did. And, and I kind of do, but I, I, I kind of don't either. Build quality though is really lacking, it just feels cheap. And you know what, yeah, it's not an expensive meter. We're talking 15, 16 bucks Canadian, around 12, 13 US, so it is not a lot of dinero. But even so, I just wish it had a little bit better quality. At the end of the day, I'm really torn. You know, it's got the good, it's got the bad. I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt though, just because it really is an inexpensive meter. And it did impress me with that higher than normal cap range. And continuity wise, it was great. Hey, if you're not expecting a whole lot from your cheap old multimeter, and you wanna have something that is auto ranging that you can throw in the box, this is probably one of the better ones that have come across my bench. The Anning S1 gets a solid three out of five stars. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. Don't forget that Halloween special coming up October 31st, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. The video will be released. And well, you know, it's gonna be kind of scary, but it's gonna be a lot of fun too. So I hope you catch it. Till the next time. Keep on testing.